What up, Long Beach? Welcome back to the 562.org. It's Tyler. And Mike. And this CIF Championship basketball video is brought to you by Naples Rib Company. And all of our Long Beach Poly coverage this year is sponsored by our friends at Bryson. Thanks to all our sponsors. We're down at Edison where the color scheme was right, but that was about it. Long Beach Poly taking on Marina in the boys basketball Division 2A championship game. It's the Seasiders versus the Eastsiders, Mike. Jackrabbits coming in off a couple of close wins in these playoffs. Absolutely led by junior Giovanni Ruff, a potent scorer, big time college recruit. Obviously, you know so well. The Jackrabbits, winners of 10 straight and number 11, could bring them the program's 21st CIF championship if they can get it done. Head coach Shelton Diggs has done a great job with this group, looking for his second CIF title as head coach. Meanwhile, Marina, the Vikings, looking for their first CIF title in program history tonight, and they would start out the game hot led by their point guard, Barack Simon. He got busy from the jump. Nice drive for the and one. Screech Powers getting into his bag early, and it was a hot start for the Vikings. Then he's going to get saved by the bell, or the whistle, as that's going to be a four-point play. Mike, he had seven points in less than two minutes. Heck of a campaign from Barack right there, uh, Tyler. And Giovanni getting his night started. Textbook getting down to the elbow extended for the easy midi jumper. But Marina's defense was frustrating Polly. Jared Palacio with a couple of blocks on this sequence. He was a little turned up. They had the energy you needed when you're trying to win a big game. Then Ruff going to get called for the charge, called for two offensive fouls in that first half. And uh, when Polly rushed the three-point line, that's an easy one for Luke Pratali rolling to the rim. Then Mark Yeager going to break the sound barrier with this corner three. The Vikings go up by 10. As Polly's just trying to get something started, Isaac Hagen's going to finish down low off the nice one-touch passing. And then Giovanni Ofebu with the massive block to end the quarter. Polly hoping to roll some momentum down 17-9 after the first. For sure. Give credit to Marina for coming out, like you said, on that front foot and putting pressure on him. But the Vikings just unfazed. Dylan Gomez rattles in the three ball. They never looked like this moment was too big for him. A great pass from Simon to Ryan O'Rourke for two right there. Even when Polly made a nice play, you know, they, they got in, got the steal, but then just tended to shoot themselves in the foot. Simon steals it back, and Simon says three more points as he puts in another triple. Giovanni Ruff started to find his stroke with seven points in the second quarter, and obviously we know he can cook from the mid-range. Then it was Austin Unebu joining the scoring, first with the drive to the left hand. And then this three ball from the corner is going to cut the deficit to seven. But unfortunately for Polly, they'd get some momentum and then they'd kind of give it right back. Yeah, because after a Simon layup, Marina steals the inbounds pass. Then Gomez drills a three at the buzzer. Five points in the final 10 seconds for Marina to give them a 34-22 lead at the break. But Polly coming out of the locker room, kicking it into high gear. Giovanni going to can one. And then when the Marina threes weren't falling, Polly quickly looking the other way to cash in as Ruff going to glide in for two. And it's starting to feel like Polly's getting there, looking like themselves out there. Yeah, good ball movement's going to get it to the open shooter. And it's JoJo with the triple lead down to five. We've seen this story. This has been the mm -hmm. second half in a ton of Polly games in league and tournaments and in the postseason. Again, off the miss, Unebu gets the rebound and sprints the other way for an easy two. You just feel that sense of urgency. They're taking every possession all the way to the max offensively and defensively. And a 9-0 run for Polly and JoJo put them in a good spot. But JoJo's not done. Ofebu drills another three, and we're tied. A 12-0 run in less than four minutes for the Jack Rods. And let's go. I mean, game on at this point. But Marina would bounce back, or bounce knee maybe, as Jaeger is going to get the three-point play inside off the fortunate bounce. Then Gomez is going to hit his third three-pointer. So quickly, the lead goes right back to six for the Vikings. They needed that for sure. The Jackrabbits could not maintain the hot start to the second half. Some frustrating misses in close. Even off the steal, you expect to get some points there. And you can see the frustration from Diggs in the background. Just missed layups at the wrong time. But still, you'll take 40-38 to 38 going to the fourth after trailing by a dozen at halftime. No doubt. Uh, both teams looking inside, trading buckets back and forth for Tali. Then Aware for Polly down low, but O'Rourke would answer right back for Marina. The Vikings happy to let some clock run off and trade buckets. Felt like Polly was waiting for a play to spark the run, but Ruff denied at the rim. Now it looked like the Vikings had a layup, but Unebu comes out of nowhere. Amazing block. The ball eventually finds Ruff in the corner, and Mike... The shots just weren't falling tonight. You just needed some of these to go in. Yeah, those are back-to-back -back possessions for Polly where you get the look you wanted and it did not go down. Then Unebu with a big steal. He can't finish it off, but JoJo there for the two. 
Holly down by three points. Yeah, a little over three minutes left. Simon, a huge triple the other way to double the lead. Now under three minutes to go. Jackrabbits getting the looks they would want, but you just have to say uncharacteristic for Ruff to have these go off the rim like that as the lead remains at six. But Nana Ofebu embracing the spotlight drills a huge three-pointer. That's going to make it a three-point game with just over a minute left. That sophomore is unafraid, Mike. For sure, he is a dog. Jackrabbit's trying to lock in here. They need a stop and a score, and no big deal. Ruff Ding up Simon, pokes it away. The Jackrabbits almost get the steal, but a smart quick timeout from Marina keeps the possession there. Then Nana forces a turnover on the inbounds pass. Polly Ball down three with the ball back. Yeah, and... and there's 24 seconds here. As you can see, they call timeout to set it up. You know they want to go to number one. They don't need a three here. Ruff's going to drive it hard. He'll get fouled, can't finish. And, and you can see the frustration uh, for him offensively late in this game. It's going to set up some big free throws. Unfortunately, the first one would come up short. That one hurts. Ruff would make the second to cut it to a two-point game. But, Mike, Marina's not the team you want to get in a free throw shootout with late. The Vikings were 7-7 seven of seven at the line tonight and um, just kept Polly at arm's reach. Jackrabbits with a desperation heave in the final seconds. It does not go, and Marina will celebrate their first ever CIF title in boys basketball. And certainly a frustrating game for the Jackrabbits, but the Vikings did camp come in, played well from the start, and they got the dub. For sure, that uh, early lead key for them. Simon and Ruff each with a game-high 19 points. Jackrabbits just could not convert late. Holly begrudgingly accepting the silver plaque. They do still have the state tournament remaining. We will have those brackets when they're released on Sunday afternoon. And obviously, you already know, we'll have your coverage at the 562.